Right, this morning, uh, I welcome Paul Spicer. I've known Paul for about five million years, and I'm really looking forward to your presentation, Paul. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Peter. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so, uh, just to give you an idea, very, very brief idea of what I do. Uh, my industry, uh, I am in the events industry. Uh, we do sound lighting and staging um, for businesses. And as Peter says, he's known me for donkey's years. Uh, and my company's been running over 17 years now. Um, one of the biggest things that's helped us is just like we're doing right now, I do a, a heck of a lot of networking. Uh, and I go attend a lot of networking meetings, do a lot of stuff online, do all different types of marketing. And one of the biggest things that's kind of saved my neck in this business is tracking and tracing um, all our leads and making sure we know where they come from, how we use them to be most effective and seeing uh, are they working, serving us best. So my talk today is literally a very basic thing. I've, I've presented this a couple of times uh, at different family businesses. It's the first time I've done it online, so bear with me with the, with the little bit of technology that I'm going to use. But I'm literally going to talk about a, a little spreadsheet that we threw together quite a few years ago, um, which has basically saved our bacon many, many times. This is a, a wonderful little um, spreadsheet that I threw together. It's nothing too technical. I'll talk you through it. I'm more than happy, as I've said before, other uh, groups to share this with you. So if you want to send me your details, I'll email it you. You can adjust it or change it to your heart's content to make it work for you. But basically, it tracks a number of things. It checks where you're spending your marketing on. Are you getting your return on investment on it? How many clients you're getting out of it? Uh, tracks who your top customers are, how much they're spending with you, um, uh, and whether they're spending more than the previous year. Um, also, there's a very simple thing that your conversion rate of your bookings, leads, and what your turnover is. And then a really important thing for us is sort of on those jobs that we're doing, are we actually making any money on those jobs? Um, so the first thing I'm going to discuss about, which is this first page, and I'm going to just drop this bit on the screen down there so I can see it. This is basically what I call customers and tracking. Um, all the details that you see on this are fictional. So take this with a pinch of salt. I've thrown this in, um, but there'll be a few names and things and you'll recognize. I've literally down on this left-hand side here, got all the different types of networking that we've done all over the last 17 years. Now, it can be anything from um, Networking groups, breakfast groups, uh, we've got the best of advertising on yellow pages. Yes, we did used to do that, and it did work at the time. Um, got all different networking groups. Some of these meet every uh, every week for a breakfast, once a month. Uh, now they've gone online, it might be every week, but normally when we're in the, as a, the normal status as we are, we might meet every two weeks, whatever, and I basically track it. And I run this for a year. Because I believe when you're networking or you're marketing or you're doing a, ca a campaign, you should always give it a lengthy amount of time because there are so many people that I speak to and say, so what are you advertising on? What networking events are you going to? And I say, well, I'm doing this, this and this. And I'm going, how's it working for you? And they kind of look back and go, well, I don't know. Or they go, well, it didn't really work. So the people that say don't know is because they're not actually keeping an eye on tracking on the leads. So when you have the further conversation with them, you actually then realise that actually they did get job A, B and C. And actually they did make this, this and this. And I've actually made more money than I thought they made from that group. But the other people say, oh, well, it, it didn't work for me. Well, how long did you do it for? Oh, I went twice. So you went twice over a period of 12 months to an event and you expected work straight away. Doesn't always work like that. So. My basis is you give it 12 months and I have some very strict rules and Peter's heard me say this before. At the end of the 12 months, whether it's a marketing campaign, networking group, whatever, it sounds very selfish from point of view. I have to look at two things. One, has this gained me new contacts, new suppliers, uh, new people that I've given business to? If it has, great. That's a reason to continue doing what you're doing. Yes, I know that means you're not getting any business in, but you can't be on a, a completely selfish basis. If you want to look at it at a completely what's in it for me, then you have to look at, right, am I getting business from this? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, have I paid 200, 300 quid to be part of this group? 
Yes. How much money did I make back? So if I made a couple of grand back and I only forked out a couple hundred quid, winner, keep doing it. You're obviously doing something right. Have I broken even on it? If I've broken even, okay, maybe I need to change the message about what I'm doing or have I missed a few meetings? Maybe I've not attended as much as I should. Give it a whirl, give it a second chance and then reevaluate it in 12 months. If the answer is very clear, I've been attending all the things, I did all the marketing campaigns, I did all everything I could do and I spent 500 quid and I've had zero out of it, drop it, look for something else. And that is pretty much the rules I live by on that. It's a very simple concept, but you'll be so surprised how many people attend events constantly, don't know where the leads are coming in from, don't know how much they're making, and they're just attending a group because they're attending a group. And you go, how long have you been in this group for? Years. Fantastic. How much you work for it? I have no idea. Why would you do that? That's crazy. Find what works for you and make the most of it. So this lovely little spreadsheet, as you can see, I list all the different types of marketing. So whether it's Facebook marketing, different networking groups, as I said. And then every time I get a lead in, it goes here. Every time that turns into an actual booking. So you can see I've got leads, bookings, what the value of the custom was, what it actually costs. So whether it's a membership, a cost of an advert, whatever that goes in. And then that gives you the difference. So automatically, it's not rocket science, but it tells you, yes, I've made a profit from either doing this marketing, this networking group, whatever. And it, and I list the number of clients that I get out from it. So very, very simple. Um, I'll take questions at the end. I'm going to breeze through a lot of this. Um, the next bit, I actually keep track of the customers. Now, I've not put my customers here for reasons, but it gives you an idea. But as you said, in your other spreadsheet, you have how many customers you have. This so you can see technically in ranking order who is spending the most money with you. What did they spend last year? How many times have they bought? So that's another good thing you could see because they might spend, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds with you, but then you might work out that actually that was over like 50 things. So when you work it out, they might only spend a hundred pounds each time. So that gives you an idea of what their average spend is. And a very important thing that I always keep track of, do they pay you on time? Because if it turns out that they're starting to spend less than you and their returns going down, you can do things to get them to spend more, upsell them, look at different strategies to get, get more money in, uh, and also make sure that they're not being a pesky client that uh, doesn't pay you on time. Let's move this across. Um, very simple one here, bookings and turnover. So really easy. The number of leads that you got that month, uh, the total number of bookings that you got from that, that obviously gives you a conversion rate, and then also the total turnover there. You can also put in comparisons if you wanted to. That's pretty self-explanatory. But the reason I do that is if I'm basically getting 50 leads in a month from all the different marketing and I'm converting 50 leads, there's something wrong there. Either I'm too cheap or I'm taking on the wrong type of work. No one should be converting 100%. That's a bit of a worrying thing. On the other end of the scale, if you're getting 50 leads in and you're only converting one, something else is wrong. So this is a good indication of kind of where you should sit. I have been told by numerous people that if you're sitting in round about 40 to 70% mark, then you're, you're pretty much doing something right. That's kind of a decent conversion. So I'm on again, this is an example. I normally sit around about 64%. I could tell that. And we check that year on year, month on month. Um, to see that we are, and if, if we think it starts to drop, we have put our prices up if necessary. If then it's gone the other way, and some people that normally buy from us don't, we think, right, okay, maybe we put them up too much, so we'll just claw it back a bit. And you can actually see that that starts to work. And then the final bit, and probably one of the most important bits, is do you make any money on the jobs that you do? So I've got a whole list of jobs down here of events that we've done from all different types of things over the months. Um, and really simple, what we charge a client, what were the costs involved to put this on? So for instance, you know, we might put an event on, but we might have a really busy day. So we might have a lot of kit out of the warehouse. So we've actually hired in some kit. We might have had all our engineers out. So we've had to hire in other technicians as well to cover that job. So once we've done the job, we have to look at it and go, right, was it viable? Now, we normally try and do that beforehand to make sure, but obviously other little costs can creep in. 
bits and pieces. And we look at it and go, was it viable? So they're a £400 job. The cost were 200 And then you've pretty much made a 50% profit. That's all right. But you time, sometimes we find we've had to analyse because some of the bigger jobs we do, you know, like 20 grand, 30 grand jobs, we've looked at it. And over previous years, we dropped an absolute clangor because of the fact that, oh, right, because we've got this other stuff on. We've had to hire these people in and done that and done that. And we'd already agreed the price with the client. And we realised our costs were totally different from what we initially set out. And there's been somewhere we've literally made, made like a 5% profit on like a huge job. And we've gone, we dropped the ball there. We've messed up big time. So that's got us to look at our, the way that we price things up, the way that we um, look at everything in terms of, right, okay, if we're going to do this, can we see any foreseeable costs that are going to come in extra or last minute that would affect this or change this? So that makes it, those events more viable. And over the last few years, We've seen that. So when we have done like a big 30 grand job, instead of only making a crown's worth of profit, we've managed to make sure that we've either made 50% or more on that. So that's been great for us. Um, it's a very simple thing. Uh, you know, it's not the most technological thing uh, on the planet. I'm going to uh, stop sharing the screen there. Um, but the, the idea is it's saved our bacon many times. It's pointed out little inconsistencies or things where we've gone wrong. Because let's face it, everyone makes mistakes. We've been in business 17 years. We still make mistakes to this day. But the idea is that this stops us losing money. It helps us make sure that we get more leads in. It means we know exactly where our leads are coming from. We know what our clients are spending. And if we get the odd year where a client doesn't spend, you know, and we think, oh, God, we've not been in touch with them. We've dropped the ball here. We can get on the phone and go, hi, are you okay? What's happening? It might turn out in our instance, they go, oh, yeah, we've just decided this year we're not running that event. Because that happens, again, we've decided that the annual conference is now ever going to happen once every two years. And we've got a number of clients that do that. So we're like, good, we haven't lost a client. We know to keep in touch with them, get in touch with them at the start of the year, follow them up, get the booking again for the following year.